Hi and welcome from your ITC Geeks. My name is Trevor Hallam and today we're going to talk about OneNote and some of its more advanced features. In this three-part series we've explored creating and setting up our OneNote in class notebooks. We've even looked at our favorite features and discussed lesson creation. In this third and final part we will talk about upping our use of OneNote by looking at a few features we haven't discussed yet. These features are powerful and can be used by anyone. Most of these features we've discussed so far are what I would call your daily driver features or ones that you use for basic creation of content. These features that I'm about to show you will kick your use of OneNote up a notch and may become part of your daily use. While the purpose of this presentation is to talk about OneNote features that will help you create interactive lessons within OneNote, we will also be taking some time to talk about topics from the digital learning playbook, specifically about student engagement. These topics will better equip us so we understand how students engage, so that we can leverage it to create better lessons. These lessons will not only be interactive, but they'll be engaging, providing us a very powerful tool. By improving our understanding of student engagement, we will see that lesson design and not OneNote is key to creating interactive, engaging lessons. It's important that as our knowledge of OneNote increases, so does our knowledge of the best ways to use it. Sound good? Okay, let's get started. All right, before we begin our actual presentation, I have to show you something. I got my OneNote Microsoft MIE purple shirt on for support of OneNote today. I didn't bring my cape, but that's okay. In something else, I made a PowerPoint today for to carry us through the presentation. So, I think we're ready. We got our shirts on. Get your purple out, and then let's slide over to the slideshow, and we'll start getting after this. Okay, so we're ready to begin our slideshow, but I had something to share with you. In this presentation, um, I'm going to use PowerPoint exclusively for the video. Not something I've done before, but I was just recently messing around with it and discovered all of its cool, powerful tools. Normally, I use something called Camtasia to make our videos, but I wanted to see how this worked and how cool and what a quality video that we could make in here. And I'm pretty sure we can. Hopefully, by the end of the video, see some of the cool effects and things that we can do. One last bit before we actually jump over to the agenda is I got this cool PowerPoint slideshow that I that I got and it's got some cool animations so hopefully you're watching them as we do this so you can kind of see those integrated in there so some really nice cool effects for your videos if you're interested in this like I said I'm gonna be making a video about how to do this or for to show you so that you can do this with your classes and your students all right let's get started all right here we are at our agenda for today we're gonna to start off by talking about student engagement and kind of really defining that by the way that it's portrayed and explained within the distance learning playbook. After we have that discussion, we'll get straight into the features or some of these advanced features of OneNote. It's worth noting that some of these features may require additional devices besides your computer, specifically Office Lens, which is can be done on your computer but is served better by being done on a mobile phone. Additionally, digital inking, while you can do it with your finger and a rubber tip stylus with a touchscreen computer, this is gonna be served better if you have some type of an input device, if your computer is uh, has the ability to write on its screen with a digital inking device, um, or you buy one of the like Wacom tablets um, where you write on the tablet itself and it gives you the ability to digital ink. So some of these are gonna be better served with some extra devices, but can be done with your standalone computer, assuming that you have a touchscreen computer. All right, let's get right into this. All right, topic one, student engagement, as defined by the digital learning playbook. Let's take a look at this so that we can better use it for our lesson creation. According to the distance learning playbook, engagement is at the core of learning. While there are many other factors discussed in the book, we are going to focus on how we can harness engagement to create better interactive lessons. Lessons that are designed at their core to be a function of engagement because technology is not inherently interactive, contrary to popular belief. So, to truly create a 
better engaging interactive lesson. We need to refresh our understanding of engagement. Engagement can be broken down into three observable areas, behavioral, cognitive, and emotional. Each of these aspects can be seen in students' actions. Teachers interviewed about the concept of engagement see it as the doing, which is also called participating. If we take this concept farther, we can think of engagement as a continuum or a continuum of doing. As you can see on the continuum of engagement, students can be actively unengaged on the far left to actively engaged on the far right. As you can see, this continuum is broken up into doing actions exhibited by students. These are doing actions that you have seen and deal with daily. Teachers interviewed for the playbook describe engagement as the doing of students. In other terms, we can describe this doing as how students participate. Technology is often seen as an instant engagement at first glance. But from our experiences and research, we know that isn't the case. The playbook has this to say, shifting the attention from the tool to the functions, we can hone what we need to accomplish in order to build students' capacity in face-to-face -face and distance learning. In other words, we need to focus on the design of the content, not the use of technology. The playbook notes that boredom has a significantly negative impact on learning with an effect size of negative 0.47. To counter that, teachers need to make learning relevant for students. Factors like personal association, usefulness, and identification play a major role in the engagement continuum. While this is something that teachers excel at with face-to-face -face teaching, this can be lost in translation during the distance learning. The pandemic has opened our eyes to distance or remote learning, and while we may not be currently teaching like that, we may need to be aware of how that teaching space differs from face to face. To take that a step farther, students working in a digital workspace like a OneNote or Schoology, even in a face to face environment, will have an experience like distance learning. So, we should be leveraging the same techniques that we would in a remote setting while in a face to face environment with digital resources. This is also known as a blended learning environment. So it's just as important and beneficial to us and our students. Students can move between these forms of engagement and we want to help them move from participating to investing and driving on the engagement continuum. As you can see, engagement is far more than just digital tools. We can use digital tools to enhance engagement. They cannot be the driving force. That needs to come from the ways that we design the lessons. Instead of wading through the sea of tools, or in this case, the features of OneNote, we need to consider the functions of information. The first of these functions is to find information efficiently and be able to evaluate whether the information is useful, creditable, accurate, and corroborated by other sources. The second is the use of information is accurately and ethically. Third, create information such that its creation deepens one's understanding. Fourth and final, share information responsibly with audiences for a variety of purposes. The medium that information is manipulated, be it verbally, with paper, or digitally, doesn't matter. Focusing on functions, we can hone what we need to accomplish in order to build student engagement. Now that we've identified these functions of information, we can use them to create these opportunities of engagement, right? Once we have these opportunities of engagement, we can then accentuate them with technology tools and integrate technology tools in there. So you can kind of see the system that we're building here. It starts with the concept, we create some opportunities, and then finally we add in our technology. So let's take a look a little bit more closely at these opportunities of engagement. We can use these engagement opportunities as a guide to narrow our search for the most useful edtech tool for this job. Students' engagement opportunities can be broken down to 
Number one, for finding information, focus on how the students can locate information, organize and analyze information, sources for accuracy. Two, for using information, see if the student can cite sources of information and make judgments about how best to use the information. Three, creating information. Can the student write and discuss info according to grade level expectations? Also, can they transform information in order to explore ideas new to the learner? And four, and finally, for sharing information, is the student able to accurately match purpose to the audience or use metacognitive thinking to identify the best strategies for the stated purpose? In the previous video sessions on OneNote, we have seen activities built around these functions of information and opportunities of engagement. To summarize, just because a tool is made available to you doesn't mean that you need or should use it. With the sheer quantity of tools made available to you, you need to be selective in which tools you use and incorporate into your curriculum for you and your students. Many tools will accomplish the same or similar tasks. My model for technology has always been free and easy, but it's becoming outdated. It only speaks to the technology itself, not how to enhance my lesson and to help me better achieve my objective and increase student engagement. My motto then becomes my first level of criteria. If it doesn't meet this first level of criteria, being free and easy, then I keep looking. In my experience, I've always been able to find a resource that meets this basic criteria. There's tons available, but now I need to not only find them, but look to see if they meet the other requirements of student engagement. Of course, OneNote meets these criteria, and also so do these advanced features. To decide if the technology indeed helps me reach my objective, let's see if it can answer these questions. Question number one, what learning function does this tool fulfill? Question two, is it developmentally appropriate for my students to use with minimal adult support? Question three, does this tool have accessibility features that meet or are aligned to digital compliance requirements? For example, does it have a screen reader? Does it provide closed captioning? So the question that begs to be asked is, does OneNote meet these three questions that we just asked? And it's yes, but that's contingent. Contingent on the fact that we've built the lessons around these learning functions and engagement opportunities. If we just drop a worksheet in, not likely going to meet all of these engagement opportunities or these questions that we're trying to answer. So we really have to consider how we're using the functionality of OneNote to get to our objective. More than creating engaging interactive content, consider creating opportunities to deepen students' learning. Consider the following. Encourage students to think in more than one way by transforming from closed to open tasks. Pose problems to students that can be solved in multiple ways. Move from information to understanding by requiring students to connect and relate. Design some tasks so students need to compare two phenomena, identify rules and patterns, and figure out when dissimilar ideas are related. Ask students what they think first rather than telling them what they will need. Create tasks that allow students to try out their ideas first to see what works and what doesn't. Position students to plan a way forward by moving from procedure to problem solving. Foster a group's self-reliance by providing them insufficient information at first, giving them only some of the steps or including some irrelevant information. Tasks designed with these principles in mind can increase engagement whether performed independently or in collaboration with others, be in face-to-face -face or during remote learning. As we move forward in this session, I'd like you to consider how not to use the features of OneNote that I'm showing in a lesson, but rather how can they enhance existing lessons that you know are already engaging and have a clear function. In some cases, you may redesign your lesson and others, you may be able to use the features of OneNote as it stands. Either way, let's look at some of these features while you're thinking about engagement. 
While most of these features achieve our finding information engagement opportunities, they can extend much farther into each of the other opportunities, enhancing students' responses. Okay, now it's time to talk about advanced features in OneNote. Advanced is meaning that they're not our basic, but now that we've got this idea of engagement and creating better lessons, we need to start to look at some of the features of OneNote that can help us up that ante. They're not going to make or break your lessons. You need to design those appropriately, right? You need to be creative and engaging and make a good lesson. But with that good lesson, some of these features then will make that a better, more integrated environment and may bring out and accentuate some of these objectives that we're trying to meet. So let's take a look at some of them. Our first one up is tags. All right, tags is a simple concept. With tags, it's really kind of like a hashtag. Hence tags. So if you've ever used hashtags anywhere in any social media, that's essentially what it is, but specifically for OneNote. And then the best part about that is, is you're not limited to just a hashtag. You can make a tag a combination of things. So let's take a look at them and how to make them right now. All right, opening up OneNote, now we're in there. Let's take a look. We can see I'm on the sheet for tags here. And tags can be found under the Home tab at the top, all the way to the far right it'll look like this little checkbox. It'll be the most recent tag that you have. So they give you a couple of tags to start with. So to do, important, question, remember for later, these are all ones that they give you by default. So these are ones that are you know, installed right away. But you can create your own tags. And if you scroll down here, you can see I've got a definition because I wanted that to be a little bit different. Um, you can see I've got ones marked algebra and astronomy, ones for different curriculums that I've taught to identify different pieces of information. I've got dates, learning objectives, keywords, on and on. So they give you some symbols that you can use to create your own custom tag, and then you can you know, give it a name. And so what tags are, are meant to do is the tag pieces of information inside of OneNote. So let's take a look at that now. So right here, you can see I've got some learning objectives, create engagement and opportunities, and compare two phenomenon. These are things that I need to do. So I'd like to tag these for myself in case I'm you know, asked to pull up my learning objectives or I wanna find whatever objective I'm working on. And I'm gonna go up here now that I've highlighted them. And again, you don't have to highlight them. You can actually just click on them and do them one at a time. But if I wanna do two pieces of information, I'm gonna highlight them. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say, these are going to be learning objectives. And you can see it puts a little target on there, hence a learning objective, um, and it identifies those. So let's tag a few more things here. Now we've got some student notes. Let's say that these are notes that I gave to the kids um, and one of my students, or maybe even I tagged it for them. I'm going to select these things. These are important things. So maybe they're keywords. So I've got a keyword tag. I'm going to go ahead and click those. Those are all now keywords. And so if they went to search for this tag, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, um, they'll come right up for them. So and if you do it on multiple pages, all your keywords through all of your notes will come up. I'm gonna come down here to student homework. Um, looks like they've got some things to do. They gotta study for the quiz. They got some problems on page 56. I'd like to mark those with the to-do tab so that they know, or maybe the student marks it, say, hey, I've gotta do these things. And you can see that it pops up with a little square. Now the to-do tabs are interactive. They're kind of nice. You can actually click on it right on the page to say, oh, I did do the homework already, but I haven't studied for the quiz. Oh, maybe they reverse it. Oh, no, I didn't do the homework, but I did study for the quiz. Well, you just click again, and then it marks it that way. So that's kind of nice. And then you can see down here there's a formula, so we'll go into our custom tags again, and I think I, I made one that says formula. So we'll flag that as a formula. So if this was a math class, they can mark the things that they have to do. They could also mark important formulas. And then here's the power of tags, right? Remember the like hashtags. So they, they come forward when you search for them. We're going to come over here to the search icon and I'm going to go ahead and click it. And then it'll give you a search box. But notice down at the bottom, it'll give you some of those pre-made tags to do important. And uh, I haven't used that one, discuss with option. I'm not sure where that comes from. But if I clicked on these here, it would pull up tag, anything tagged with that particular tag. So just for example, let's do the to-do because I've got a few on this page. So I click it, you'll notice it goes from pages to tags, and you can see here it pulls up anything that's a to-do inside of all of my notebooks. Not just this page, it's going to bring you the most recent at the top and then any of the other ones sequentially by date below. So you can see here, here are the problems one by ten. When I click on it, look what it does. 
it will take me to the page and it'll highlight the part that I clicked on, the part that was tagged. Um, you can see here if I click on this one, it's going to switch my page to a different page that I made for this demo and it says start a class notebook and you can see it takes me directly to that and it takes me to that page. It was just super handy. It finds anything in any of your notebooks anywhere. Now you can, you can customize this particular search, not that search is our advanced feature, but it kind of falls in line here. You can choose different notebooks or sections or, or whatever you like to do here. You can say all notebooks or just this notebook, which is handy so that you don't get information that you don't want that are tagged through all your notebooks. So that's really nice. So let's go back. We'll use the back arrow here. Um, and let's say we finish those problems. Let's, uh, let's create a custom tag because I don't think we've done that yet. Oh, well, let's search for a different tag because we did to do. So now I'm going to search keywords because I know that that's um, what I made that custom tag to be. And you'll notice when I search the word keywords, it's going to say, would you like me to search it for the word itself in all of my notebooks? Or because it's a tag with that terminology, it's going to pull that up. So if I click that, you'll see here are different keyword things that I've tagged, right? So I tagged with the keyword. So that's really nice. All right, now let's make a custom tag. Let's make one. So we're going to come up here to their, our tags. We're going to click that down. We're going to come down to the bottom. Oh, right here, if you see this says used in notebook, this will show you any tags that were used in this notebook, right? So there's tags here that will identify. Um, and then let's create a new tag at this point. So I'm going to click create a new tag. It should open a box over here on the right and it's going to show me a bunch of symbols and then give me a choice of a name. And that's really what it is. So there's all icons. You can see that there's a variety of icons here. There's quite a bit that you can choose from to make anything that you like. Um, let's say, let's choose the light bulb because that looks like fun. And then I want to name it for in terms of a name, let's say demo. So this is going to be my, my demo tag. So things that my, I might put in my notebook that I know that I need a demo for a presentation or for someone and I just want to pull them up to remember what they are. So I'm going to go ahead and click create. There it is. And maybe I want to demo how to study for the quiz on Monday for my students. So I'm going to go up here to my tags now and I'm going to drop that down. The new tags will fall to the bottom of the list. There's one that says demo. I'm going to click it. And you'll notice that I actually have it tagged twice. It says that I've completed it as a study, but I can have it tagged as a demo as well. Really, I guess it's important to say I can tag any piece of information multiple times. So now if you look at this one, it now has three tags. It's been completed, it's a demo, and I've highlighted it to remember it for later. And when we search these things, if I come up here and I search the keyword demo now, so under tags and under demo, you can see that it'll actually show this item because it falls within the demo tag, but it'll also show the other pieces of information that it was tagged with, which is super nice. So if you tag multiple things to really kind of pull them out, you can. So notice the list becomes very short with this one, which is awesome. And it's also the only one that we've tagged with demo. So that's a, a quick overview of what tags are. And again, tags aren't going to make or break your assignment. But what it will do for students and for you working within OneNote, it will really allow you to find information quickly and organize things in a way that allows you to pull information and create things quicker and easier, right? So again, we're accentuating that lesson process. We're not creating a lesson from this. And that's really what technology should do, right? Okay. Let's take a look at our next feature. Okay, so the next feature that we're going to look at is Office Lens, which is its own app outside of OneNote, but the creativity or the people that make OneNote were awesome about this and took and mixed it in directly into OneNote, making a very powerful tool for OneNote and for students and teachers in creating lessons. Here's what Office Lens does if you're not familiar with it. Office Lens allows you to take a picture or an image of anything generally with your cell phone you can do it with the camera on your computer be it not quite as good quality so you can take any image from any angle and basically take something that's paper or not existing as a digital instance at that point and then transfer it into OneNote directly and straighten it out so that it looks super smooth awesome what it's for then is really student work or your work that you'd like to make digital. And you don't want to run to the copier or printer to scan it. You can do it right from your mobile device through the OneNote app. It's super awesome, super easy, super quick, and very powerful. 
So I've got a little video here of my phone going through this process. So I'm going to talk you through it and kind of everything that's happening within it. And you can kind of see it in action. So let's take a look at that now. All right, so we've opened up our OneNote app and you can see that we're in OneNote right now. And as we're in OneNote, I'm gonna to navigate to the folder I'd like to open or like to use for this demo. And then I'm gonna to go to the page. So you can see me scrolling around here and I choose this unit one where the demo stuff is for my OneNote. And then I'm gonna go down here to the page that says Office Lens. You can see it there. Once I click it open, I'm on this page in my mobile app. I'm gonna click anywhere on the page itself. And you can see I chose a little camera there and then it transfers over to my camera. Well, I have some sample work here for my son doing some math and I take it and you can see here at the bottom there's a bunch of choices you can have there everything from photo to whiteboard to business card but the one that's most important for me is the document page so as I'm looking at the document page notice how I kind of went back at a weird angle you can see there when I took the picture it outlines again if you have some contrast there it outlines that page and it says hey is this what you want to put into OneNote and it, and it straightens it out once you kind of shift the little edges there and it does it for you most nine times out of ten perfectly and you can see it makes a perfect copy replica of that document and now you've got some other options you can rotate it you can go back and crop it you can add some filters if you'd like to you can even reorder multiple pages you can ink on it I think here I'm about to ink on this one if we give it a second I click ink I ink on it and then I'm gonna go ahead and confirm and then now I've also marked this page you know, maybe it was homework that I wanted to collect from a student, but maybe I forgot the backside. So let me get the backside as well. I inked on it to say, hey, this is confirmed. This was, I collected this. And then I take a picture. You can see the angle's even worse in this one, and it should straighten it out for me. So what I end up with is this handwritten paper, or anything that you'd like, straightened out, flattened out for perfect use within OneNote. That's the power of, of Office Lens. Very, very powerful. All right, our next feature then is probably my hands down favorite feature of any technology I've ever used, um, specifically with OneNote or any other services that I've tried to use it for, and that's digital inking. Now digital inking is what I would call my favorite A plus hands down amazing feature. It's a game changer. It changes the way that you teach, it changes the way that you interact with the digital environment. It's everything that you can imagine it to be, with one caveat, one little asterisk. It does require some additional technology. Now, that can be done in a multitude of ways. Um, my favorite way to do it is to get a computer that has a capacitive touchscreen and a digital stylus that you can write on there. This is not a, a standard rubber tip pen or the mesh tip. Those will work to some varying degrees, but if you're looking to transfer your exact handwriting and write like in a natural state, you'll want to get a, a computer like that. That's number one, but there are other ways to do it. You can get a stylus with your phone. Some Android phones come with that. iPads come with the Apple Pencil. That's another way to do it, and, but those are expensive ways to get into it. There is a more affordable way, and it's actually the way that I entered into the space, which is with a writing tablet. I'll throw an image up over here. I think the brand that I used was Wacom, Wacom. I'm not really sure how to say it, but it's a it's a black tablet that you write on that plugs into your computer. And so you don't write directly on the screen, but once you do it once or twice, you get the hang of it and it works seamlessly. They've come down significantly in price. They are, in some cases, sub 50 bucks and they work fantastically. I know some teachers that are using them and love them. If you're looking to take the most advantage out of OneNote, this is how you do it especially as for a teacher because in a digital environment it can change the way that you interact with it completely right if you're taking notes on your screen is significantly different than you know uploading notes or pictures of notes you can replicate this however with a document camera facing down as you write you can also do this with an elmo or some type of again document camera um, these are other ways that you can duplicate the same thing but it's still not the same because you can't write in the digital space the way it's intended, but it does duplicate the process. And so for that regard, that falls into the same thing, but this does it directly into OneNote and it gives you some more additional powerful tools that I'm gonna show you here that you can't get with a document camera or an Elmo. So I've recorded me doing some digital linking for you and I'm gonna walk you through it now. So let's take a look. Okay, here we are in our notebook and we're ready to start digital inking. 
The first thing that I'm going to tell you to do before you digital ink in OneNote is to expand your canvas. There are two places that you can do this. The first place is going to be over on the left right here and you can see that those notebooks can go away. The second is using the little arrows in the upper right there to completely get rid of everything besides your canvas. Now you have a nice large clean canvas to work with. The second thing that I'm going to tell you to do is to add ruled lines. Now this means that you can add in paper lines, graphs, or grids. And so if you can see here, you go under the view menu, you can click rule lines, you can have tight ones like college form, you can have elementary ones, you can have grids. There's lots of different versions that you can do here. And if you're gonna write in here and not on something, I would highly recommend adding rule lines. The third thing I'd have you do inside of OneNote is to change your writing utensils or add some. So up at the top, you can see I've got pens as I write this and pencils and a highlighter. You can customize these so that you have a certain setup at all times. Within here, you can add pens, you can add a pencil, a highlighter, and then you can change the size, the thickness, and the weight of each of these so that you can kind of really customize what you're gonna write. As you can see here, I can quickly click between my customized pens to get the effect that I like. Next, you can choose any pen and then you get a drop down menu so you can change size and color of each of the pens that you've customized. So if you look here, I click on a pen, I click the drop down arrow, and you can see that I've got size changes across the top and a multitude of colors. Additionally, if I click more colors, I get a whole nother range of colors there. Um, and then I can add other pens and highlighters as I see fit and customize them to colors, which can be changed at any time. The fifth thing that you can do with digital inking is that you can take pre-written text and select it and then change its color and size after you've already written it. So you can see here I'm writing that down so that we can have something to work with. And then I go up to the top, I use the selection tool to select that text. And then I go to any of my pens and now I can choose any color and it'll change instantaneously. I can additionally change the size by increasing it or decreasing it to the size that best fits that particular writing. The sixth thing that I can do is ink to shape. What this allows me to do is draw any shape once I've selected it in the upper corner there, you can see I select it, and I can draw a rectangle, a box, a circle, a triangle, any shapes, basic shapes that I like, and it will automatically put it to a perfect shape for me. The seventh thing that you can do with digital inking is ink to text. So any text that you write, you're gonna go ahead and put out, and you're gonna grab the lasso at the top, and you're gonna select that text and then choose ink to text. And it's gonna transform it into text that can be used in any document on the computer. The next feature of digital inking is a digital ruler, handy in all sorts of places. You can go up to the upper right corner, you'll see ruler up here, you can select it, it comes up on the screen, you can move it side to side and up and down with a single finger and you can rotate it with two. You can line up, it actually has a protractor on there so you can see the angles that you're drawing at and this is powerful for math and or just general drawing. The ninth feature in digital inking is to add a space. So if you've written a bunch of things and you want to create a little space to add some more information or if you go back and want to add notes, you go up to the top and you select the two lines with the arrows and once you have that, you can drag on the screen and it will make a space for you. And it works horizontally and vertically and then you can add in what other notes that you want to do without having to move all of your notes, super handy. The 10th thing that you can use in digital inking is Math Solver. Now this might be specific to a math class, but could be useful in other areas. So Math Solver then would allow you to write down by hand any equation that you like. Now this works well with Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, um, upper levels of maths that may not work as well, but it can solve quite a few different equations out here. So you can see here we've got x plus 4 equals 2, we use the lasso tool, and then we go over to the three dots and then choose the math option. At this point we can choose ink to math, which changes it into a text, a tiny text, but then we can move it around and manipulate it. From there, we can also select an action. So we can solve for x, which will show us what x is equal to, and then we can take a look at show steps, which will actually show each step that it takes to solve these problems. In my math class, we found this to be more useful than just checking our answers as, as we learn more from the process of getting there than having the correct answer. Now, we did spend time getting the correct answer, but understanding it first and how we got there was more valuable. Another option that we can choose is to graph both sides of the equation so that we can graph each expression and see where they intersect, again, giving us our solution. Additionally, we can also just graph it in 2D to see what that would look like as a solution set. 
If we like that graph, we can choose insert to page so that it puts it onto our actual page. We can then manipulate it, move it around. We can annotate on it. The next part about this, probably the coolest one, is that you can generate a practice test right from this equation. So that takes the equation and it's going to create a Microsoft form for us here. You can see it loading. Then it's going to ask you how many questions you like to practice of something very similar to this. Once we choose our number, and we'll go with the standard three here, it's going to generate this quiz so that you can put it right inside of the OneNote. And then once it's in the OneNote, you can actually take this quiz. These are all very similar to the structure of the original expression or equation that we wrote. And then you can take this quiz and then mark each one correct. And then once you're done, you submit it, it will show you if you got those right. Really setting up for students to self-monitor or self-practice their math here. This creates an environment that's different from a regular math class because they can kind of choose and control what they're practicing and what they do. This really provides them ownership in the way that they're learning. Very powerful for a math class, very powerful for a math teacher and student. The last thing I'm going to show you in digital linking is that you can insert a document on top of a page. I think that you know about this already, but we're going to go ahead and show it here because it's also super powerful. So when you insert a document on a page, you're going to want to do a little secret, and I'll show you here when it comes up, is that you're going to want to save it to the background. Now by doing that, it locks it into place, and any of the writing that you do on top of it won't move or be distorted. It'll stay right there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and click over to insert, click on print out, and then we're going to navigate to a document and choose it. And what it's going to do is it's going to essentially take that digital document and print it as a document right inside of OneNote, something you would print out of a printer. Now you can see right here, I'm about to click on this image and I'm going to right click and choose set picture as background. It's going to lock it in there. So now when I write on top of it, not all of these layers are going to be moving around. And if you're not sure about layers, go ahead and check out my previous videos. They'll go into great depth on that for you. You can see here I'm filling out a subform, um, and then the great part about this subform is I could actually print this if it was on its own page and send that in to my administration. There's a great overview for you for digital linking, and if you have those abilities and you learn something new, great. If you don't have the ability to digital link with an actual stylus, a capacitive touch screen, or a Wacom tablet, this would be your indication to go get one, because there are some super cool things in here that you probably want to do. So. Either way, digital linking is so powerful, and we love OneNote for that. Okay, our next advanced feature in OneNote is related to the last one a little bit. Take any of the digital inking that you've done in any of your notebooks, and then you can do what we call stroke replay. I'm going to throw you up a quick video. We'll talk through it, so let's take a look. Okay, in this clip, I'm going to show you stroke replay. Now Stroke Replay takes anything that you've written and the sequence that you've written it down in and replays it exactly as you did it. So find some text, grab your lasso, select an area that you'd like, go to View and select Replay. So you can see here I've selected that area that we just did in the last section and it will replay in each stroke and each thing that I add, not just um, handwritten, but even text or pictures added or anything that I put on this page, it'll replay it exactly as it went. And this can be super powerful for any type of detailed instructions or notes where you want to go back and see exactly how it came down because we don't always write in order. So super useful. Okay, so our next advanced feature is sticky notes. And sticky notes is super useful if you're one to put sticky notes all over your desks and everywhere. If you use sticky notes within OneNote, it's also attached to an app separate that can also go on your phone. You can take those sticky notes anywhere you go to any computer or any device that you're at. It's cloud-based, so it's fantastic. It's attached directly to your OneNote, so awesomeness there. Um, but sticky notes, like for me, I used to use Google Keep, and I still do for some things, but I am transferring over to sticky notes with Win OneNote because it also has a feed that shows you all your information. It allows you to search all of your notebooks at the same time. Plus, additionally, you'll see in the clip here that sticky notes can stay on your screen just like actual sticky notes on your computer screen. So, without further ado, let's take a look. Sticky notes are great because it's tied into your OneNote, which kind of takes everything with you because once you get into OneNote, everything you do kind of starts to exist in there. So to get to sticky notes, you can see in the upper corner there, we select those little sticky note looking things. We're going to go ahead and sign in with our work account, or you can use your personal account, whatever one you attach your sticky notes to. 
will log you in and then it will give you your feed. Your feed then is all of your current notes that you've done within OneNote. So anything that you just did will show up and the pages and whatever you added to it. Um, you can see me here scrolling through some of the things that we've done in this video. And so as I click on them, it'll bring up the page. And so this like a recent note place, which is nice in the addition to search. You can search these two. So if I wanted to search something here, you can see I'm searching templates, which is something that we're going to be doing here in a minute. Um, and you can see that it'll pull up any of those pages uh, that we've done. So, so the search is fantastic. You can also add a note. At this point, it didn't have any existing notes. So I'm adding a sticky note inside of OneNote. So again, this is attached to a separate app as well. I'll show you that in a second here, but you can see that I'm typing in that this is a sticky note demo and it gives you some rich text editor type features. It gives you bold, italicize, underline, um, strike through, a couple of these features. You can even add a picture into your sticky notes. Right here, I just wanted to pause. You can see the note, sticky notes, the app right there that you can add to it. We'll bring that up in a minute and explore that in a little bit more detail. Actually, I think we're about to bring it up right about now. So if we'll give this a second here and then you'll see me go down and I'm gonna go into my, my Windows icon where I've got the sticky note app stored. Actually, actually, I'm gonna search for it here and I'm searching out that. You can see it load up. And once it loads up, you can see the notes here and I can go ahead and open a note and it actually makes a sticky note. This stays on your desktop like an actual sticky note. And that's what I was talking about in the beginning of the video. It's fantastic. So if you shrink everything down, there will always be a sticky note right there kind of waiting for you. Um, additionally, you can see here we can change the colors, um, which is really nice. Um, and then we can close the notes if we want to and make them go back. So you get like a sticky note home, but they can be individual at the same time and they're found in your OneNote. Here you can see that we're going to add an image to the sticky note. So we chose the image on that pink note on the right. We'll add a ITC Geeks here so that we can add that in and you'll see it goes up to the top. So you can use images. It can be an actual image. It can be a document. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do with these sticky notes. You can see here I'm going to go through all the different things you can do to the text and actually change it. So bolding and underline. But all in all, sticky notes is a great place for quick notes, pieces of information that you need that is tied to OneNote, but can be separate from OneNote. So notebooks would be your your OneNote, and then the sticky notes would be the sticky things that you add to it. So you can kind of see that they're building a quite complete virtual digital notebook with sticky notes and tabs and everything that you would have in reality. So let's take a look at the next feature. Okay, the next advanced feature that we're gonna talk about is the ability to password protect your pages in OneNote. Um, to give a better example of this and show you really how it can be used is I'm going to show you my escape room for OneNote. Um, escape rooms aren't new. There's probably something that you've used before, at least seen. Escape rooms then, if you don't know, are really a session of puzzles or clues or things that you have to solve. And then once you solve it, you're given a password or a clue to go to the next one so that you can unlock it. Um, sometimes these are in physical form where you actually have locks and key locks or in this case, it's a digital one where each page is protected by a password. So instead of exploring passwords, because that's only a small portion of it, I'm gonna show you what that looks like to have a password, enter it, and then I'm gonna show you the escape room so that you can take a little bit better look at how you could use this advanced feature to get your students really engaged. So let's jump over to OneNote. And if we take a look here, we can see that I've got a bunch of pages built up. You can see page one is the welcome page and that one's unlocked. I could lock this one so I could give them a password to get into it, but let's take a look at what it looks like to add a password or password protection to a page. So if we come over and right click on this page, you'll see that we get our menu option here and down at the bottom, it says password protect. We can choose that and then you can see there's some things to do, but right now, since we don't have a password added, the only thing we can do is add a password. So we're gonna add one here. And so I'm gonna add a password and let's just say the password is 000. Um, and then we'll confirm that by adding 0000 again, and then we'll click okay. And then you'll notice that once that password is added, that there is a lock and it will show you that it's unlocked currently, which means that we've entered the password recently. These are somewhat time sensitive. If you close OneNote, open it again, chances are they'll be locked. If you do it really quickly, it may still be unlocked. I'm not really sure what the dynamic is of locking and unlocking, but they don't stay unlocked. Um, and if you exit, they will all lock again. So if you have sensitive information in, in your OneNote that you don't want anybody else to see, you can password protect it. Um, so we can see here that the password, this one's unlocked. 
Um, if we go back to this greeting, you can kind of see how the escape room is set up. Um, it's just a little intro, gives you a little note, kind of gives you a thing about the escape room here. And it does tell you down here, start in all caps, because it is cap sensitive for the password protection, um, would start you on your, your trip. So we're going to click over here and we'll click on the video puzzle. You'll see that there is a, a password um, entry point. So in this one, it said all caps, S-T-A-R-T. And then if we click enter, you'll notice that it will show us the puzzle inside. And so then this escape room is really just to kind of demo lots of different features of OneNote. So, but these can be done specific to your content area. If it's social studies, if it's math, English, you could have them do something or figure something out to get that password to move on to the next part of the escape room. So in each of these, this one has a video, um, and then each of these can be unlocked until you get to the end. Um, and then which case it'll show you the finishing comment or explanation there. I'm going to pause really quick and I'm going to unlock all these and I'll come back because I don't need you to do the actual escape room, but I want you to see the different parts of the escape room that you can do um, with tools or features, I guess I should say, specific to OneNote. Okay, so I'm going to take you through quickly each one so you can get an idea of what this would look like as an escape room. And then you can see some other functionality that I think you already know that's in OneNote. So if we're into the first part of the escape room, which is number two, the video puzzle, we can embed videos. And so they watch this video and there's a code on top of a robot. So once they find that code in there, the video is about OneNote showing people about it. Again, could be anything for you. It could be a video that you need the kids to watch. It could be a video of review, it could be a documentary, whatever. The next one is the audio features. And this part is kind of highlighting different recordings. So these are different songs or sounds to commercials that should be familiar to you. And then it says, find the first letter of that particular item that the song goes with. And then they put it in here. It happens to be free for this one. And then they can go to the next puzzle and unlock this one. This one shows the ability to embed forms. Again, most of these features aren't new to you if you've seen the whole sequence of uh, OneNote videos that I've made for you. So this one has them take a little quiz. Each question on here has a point total. And if they get them all correct, the total of all of those points, and they're really easy questions, unlocks the next page. So this one I have uh, seen on TikTok and YouTube or wherever, whatever social media, this is a great find. By coloring the page and the ink the same color, you put a little image on top of it that layers on top of there and what it does is it gets rid of the blue background and it makes it like a little find and seek thing with your magnifying glass. So this one just is kind of silly, but it has you drag around and then you can see, you know, little notes and if you follow them all the way down, I think there's a a turtle, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere down here towards the bottom, which is just to kind of show then there's a little turtle, and which is the clue to unlock the next page. Just a clever way to use different things within OneNote to create an interactive, engaging type of activity. So moving along, a picture puzzle. Um, you can do puzzles in here. I took a picture of some dinosaurs and you have to, I know I mixed them up on here, but if you rearrange them in the right order, you can essentially create yourself a little picture out of a puzzle, not quite a puzzle, but it gets the job done. And then you count the dinosaurs and that lets you into the next part. And then in the next part you can see is your congratulatory thing. Some gifts in here that you can play and it kind of, you know, celebrates the fact that you did it. Again, here showing that you can embed GIFs within OneNote. So a nice introduction to OneNote. I've used this in a couple of presentations. It just shows some of the main features and a way to really use and leverage OneNote to do things that you can't do in other spots. All right, let's go to the next topic. Okay, so our next feature maybe isn't on our list originally, but, and it might not be so advanced, but it is one of my favorites to use and it really does allow me to kind of customize building pages within OneNote. Um, you use this in Word, you've probably seen it, but maybe it's one of those underutilized features. So this particular feature is headings. And while as simple as that sounds, it really can break and make your page, you get what I'm saying there, and the ability to kind of customize it the way that you want. So headings itself is pretty simple. Any text that you type on the screen, you can change in to a particular heading. That can be found under the Home tab. And then if you scroll over to the far right, you can see that there's various headings here. But that's really not how I use it. Obviously, I do change the headings. But my favorite part about this is that the keyboard commands for this is pretty simple and really easy to use. 
So for this, your keyboard command to any text is Control Alt, and then you hit the n the number on your number row, and each one sequentially works out from number one being the largest to varying degrees and changing them into other stuff. I mean. It works down the sequence of lists. So number one is heading one, number two is heading two, and so on and so forth until you get down to these other ones. So you can take any text and you can click anywhere on it. You don't have to select it. And then you hold Control Alt, and if you hit one, it changes it to the large title. If you hit two, it shrinks it down, and three and four, and you get the idea. So the reason that that's useful is if I'm typing stuff out, I don't have to pay attention to my formatting it's like I do in Word, and it takes a little more time. This I just kind of quickly go in and out. Bonus tip, control period will make anything a bullet point and control um, question mark will make anything a numbered list. Those keyboard commands in and of themselves work amazing to make customized content within OneNote. So not really an advanced feature, but a bonus tip of one that is one of my favorites to use. All right, let's move on to the next tip. Okay, in this advanced feature, number 17 on our list, considering all three parts of the video, we're going to talk about templates. Now, templates are exactly what they sound like. You create a page, you make it kind of generic, but you intend to use that basic form over and over and over again. So whatever the template is that you make, the purpose of it is, is that you would take and copy that page. So you would go over to the page and you would copy it and then you can move it. Um, move copy would be a good choice wherever you're going to work on it. And then you don't have to do all the preset up. So for me, this is something that I used to use in my OneNote class or my classes with OneNote. I would use a rubric and then I would have these basic titles, again, headings that we just used in the last one, that I would usually write my instructions under. So most of my assignments would start with these basic parts. So I created a template, I'd copy it over. That way I didn't have to recreate any of this each and every time. So templates are super useful, but if we kind of move into the last and final topic and combine it with this one, the templates get a little bit more powerful. So these we can share within OneNote Windows 10 app, which is what we've recommended and, and most of you are using. But with some news that I'm gonna share in a minute here with you, let's introduce what templates look like in the OneNote app, which is the old legacy version that they've renamed Window, or OneNote app and take a look at that. You might not have used this and this might be unfamiliar to you and I'll explain in a minute while I'm showing it, but let's pop it up and take a look at some of its templates. So we can open up the OneNote app and if we look on the insert tab here, and again, you don't need to be familiar with this right now or ever possibly, eh, fingers crossed. Let's take a look, you can see here there's an option for templates. And if we choose this, there are a couple choices here. So we can choose like lecture notes, it's got math, science notes, or you can create your own. But let's take a look at some of the existing ones. If we click the lecture notes, what'll happen is it'll pop up here with a pre-done lecture notes. I didn't make any of this. They give you a little nice background there, but you can kind of see it, it provides you some really nice notes. And here's some math science notes. If we click over here on the bottom choice for page templates, you can see here we get a bunch of choices that are pre-made. So this is like, again, one of my advanced features of OneNote, even though it's not the one that we currently use frequently, you can see that there are lots of choices for pre-done templates here. Stuff that we may or may not use, you can see there's colored ones, you can see those notes, you can see detailed notes, and they each change. So these are all pre-done for you, and they're nice if you wanna just throw something in quick and easy. So the reason though, that I'm using templates, and, and you kind of get the idea of templates, there's not much more to show about them, um, is that we've now opened up the OneNote app. I know the naming is super confusing. So the one that we're currently using and the one that we recommend you that you use is the OneNote for Windows 10. You can see that up here at the top. This is the older version that's be, been redubbed and is the new version which they're actually gonna push forward through. What I'd like to show you then is that there's an article here, and I'll put some graphics up showing some of this, but you can click on this link or you search this in your browser and you can actually see the article. But it goes on in here to say that they're gonna update both apps, the Windows 10 app, which we have on the screen, and then the OneNote app, which is up now. They're gonna update both of those. So both of those are gonna receive new updates. Most importantly, they're both gonna get a UI interface change, which they're gonna kind of start merging them together. And as you can see on the screen, in 2022 is when they're going to be 
conjoined. They're going to discontinue. Uh, that's a scary word. They're going to unify the two into one app. And at 2025, the Windows 10 app, which we know and love quite a bit, will be discontinued, which, which means that they just won't support anymore. It will be there, but they're going to really push us back into the old OneNote and kind of move that one forward. I'll throw some graphics up here. You can see some of the unifying images of it. They're going to try to take the bars on the left-hand side, which I enjoy immensely with, the, with your notebooks here and then your tabs and your pages. They're going to add that into the other OneNote app. And some of the features in here with the drawing, if you read through the article, they're going to move over into the other app so that we get some of the best features of the Windows OneNote Windows 10 app inside of the OneNote app. What does that mean to you? Nothing right now. It's, it's a ways in, in the future. So I wouldn't do anything yet. It does describe that you don't need to do anything to do this. You may get an invite to the new one. You don't have to accept it. You may not get an invite to the new one right away. But it does look like at the second half of 2022, again, if they keep their timeline, is when this will start to occur. So and then again, from there, you still have three years before anything really occurs. They'll still continue to update both in that time frame. But at some point in the future, you'll want to transition. Now, that being said, I was on the original OneNote 2016, the OneNote app now, before Windows, the OneNote Windows 10 app came out. And then there was a transition period because they were going to discontinue it. And then I've made it to OneNote Windows 10, and eventually I will make it back. So somewhere along the line, I'll go first full circle through the OneNote cycle. You might have to transition once. But I can tell you it's not as bad as it seems, even though you're very comfortable with it. It sounds like they're going to pull the two together really, really well. So with that being said, I was going to just kind of lightly show you some of the features in here. So this is a more powerful one, this OneNote app. You'll notice, and I won't go into great detail in any of these, but there are a lot of extra features built within this one already. There are some features that people do enjoy quite a bit, like the fact that you can store OneNotes directly on your computer. They don't have to be in the cloud. I don't have a purpose for that, but some people really enjoy it. Um, there are more advanced features and more things that you can do within here. Um, it also takes add-ons better. There are some really cool ones called OneTastic that did a lot of really cool things that I used to use in the past. But you can see that there's an equation editor. You can actually record video and put it right in OneNote using the OneNote app, which is not a feature in the Windows 10 app. So there is some benefits when we do eventually move over to this, if you ever do move over to this. But that's where we're going to end this. I wanted to show you where things were going. I'm going to show you some of the advanced features. We're not going to talk about the super advanced features in the OneNote app because that's not this video. That'll be a different one at another time down the road. We've gone through quite a few main features. We've had a nice conversation from the Digital Learning Playbook about engagement. Hopefully we've learned a few things about you know, how engagement pulls with our kids, being on a continuum, understanding that that's kind of their participation, and how that affects us and our lesson design so that we're creating opportunities of engagement and not just throwing tech at it and assuming that's their motivating source. That we use the tech after we design a well-created lesson that's in pulling in the kids engagement and then add the tech to enhance that right so we had that nice conversation to really put our minds around how we should be designing lessons in OneNote again this is advanced features or techniques the video of it right so we have to take that to the next level which is what we need to consider in how we're creating our lessons and then use the features of OneNote to really enhance that and pull it all together and some of these features that I showed you today and some of the features from the past should really start to pull all those things together. And now you can kind of see that this is an environment in OneNote that you can't find or duplicate anywhere else. And you can really create whatever is in your mind. So with that, I'm glad you were here. Thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next video.